Bukit Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live Tuesday, September 19th, 2017. And this morning we were listening to the live broadcast of President Trump as he addressed the United Nations. And if I ever seen a drumbeat of war, it reminded me of uh, former President Bush there in 2002 when he was addressing the UN. And within about three months, four months, something like that, we were already at war with Iraq. Uh, looks like we're gearing up, though, not just for a war in the Middle East uh, with Syria or North Korea, but we may go be going into a global conflict. Let's see what's happening here. Independent, and I brought this out the other day about the uh, Russian ships with the Chinese were inside the Sea of Japan for military drills. That's supposed to go on until the September the 26th, 11 ships and all. Uh, North Korea, Russia, and China carry out military drills close to the border, according to this, to North Korea's border within, I think it's 100 kilometers of the border. Of course, that picture there is of uh, U.S. Uh, planes there and Japanese planes there working together uh, near North Korea uh, that we can see there. It says Russia and China have begun their major drills less than 100 miles from North Korean border amid continuing tensions over the isolated state of nuclear ambitions. And this is something that President Trump really pointed out was North Korea, but he didn't just stop at North Korea, also spoke about Iran, the situation in Syria, different parts of the world. And, uh, and friends, this is, this is really beginning to gear up to be a serious situation because we already know that the U.S. has uh, their ships there in the, uh, the sea there near North Korea, uh, but now Australian warships are sent to the South China Sea for military exercises with the U.S. and is trying to say to China, well, there's no call for, a, uh, for alarm. Hmm. <laughs> I think it's six ships from, from Australia are headed that direction there. No call for alarm. Oh, gosh, can you think of any other time where there would be no call for alarm? UN chief nuclear threat at the highest level since the Cold War. That's what he actually stated in this uh, meeting today. And he is really calling for both North Korea and the U.S. Uh, for their rhetoric to kind of be toned down. And as he stated here, the UN general, uh, sec uh, ge excuse me, Secretary General Antonio uh, Gratas warned the world's leaders Tuesday that the threat of nuclear attack is at its highest level since the end of the Cold War uh, and fiery talk can lead to fatal misunderstandings. That's what is said there by the uh, UN's uh, uh, chief there. And of course, as I said to you before, former President George W. Bush here is seen here uh, back in 2002 he was already uh, trying to get the authorization of military force there. And of course, uh, then Congress approved that force in 2003. And within like a week or so, we were at war with Iraq. So it's almost like the same scenario repeating all over again. Uh, and also, too, RT is finally showing some video footage here. Remember, we talked about that bridge. and Everybody was like, Steve, that's an old photo. Nobody really believed that this was actually happening. Well, RT is actually showing that bridge and the Syrian military crossing the Euphrates River. So if you wanted to actually get an up-close view of this happening, now we actually have the footage courtesy of RT News. Uh, the Syrians, uh, the Syrian Arab army actually crossing the Euphrates River there near De Azor. Uh, they have gone to the other side. The Russian pontoon bridge is being installed and it's actually happened. So. Uh, we may have had maybe the wrong video at the time, I don't know, but the point is, they actually did it, and they have crossed the river. So this is the actual foot, footage from Rupley, uh, RT News posting this footage here of the Syrian Arab army crossing uh, the Euphrates River there at De Azor. This is their official footage here, and of course this news coming out, uh, I think it was today, yeah, September 19th. Syrian troops cross Euphrates that advance east of Deir Azor video. So it's, it's a done deal, friends. It's actually happening there. And I think this is another reason why there's a major concern for war, uh, not only with North Korea, but completely across the board. Looks like Iran may be targeted uh, as well in this war here. The Syrian Arab army has crossed what the U.S. generals were calling the Red Line uh, if they cross that river, they have crossed it with the help of the Russians. So what will be next? And on top of it, we have uh, lethal U.S. weapons in Ukraine. Kremlin warns against new escalation in Donbass. 
uh, when the Kremlin criticized the idea of U.S. armed deliveries to Ukraine on Tuesday, saying they may lead to a new escalation of the conflict in the Donbass region. The United States providing Kiev with lethal weapons will not promote the resolution in Donbass and will escalate tensions, Kremlin spokes, uh, spokesman Dmitry Peskov said on Tuesday. He says, we have expressed our clear and, un and um, unambiguous position on this issue that such decision would not promote resolution of the conflict in eastern Ukraine. Firstly and secondly, de-escalation of tensions. We do not know the U.S. position on this issue yet, Peskov told uh, the reporters. So we'll have to wait and see exactly how that unfolds. Uh, another interesting thing shared with me by my uh, friend uh, Sergey over in Europe uh, sent me a, a very interesting email, and it had to do with uh, Kim Jong Un, his launching of the uh, ICBM. Let me just kind of share with you real quick the this right here when he was launching his ICBM, doing his test right there. Uh, and Sergey sent me this uh, this particular article on RT in the Russian language. And what was interesting happens to be uh, this car. Let me kind of blow this up. It's not going to really give you much bigger picture right here. This car right here in the background and the license plate on this car uh, it really brought up uh, some concern. There's some different uh, people that have looked at this already, and it is a blue license plate. Well, a blue license plate is not North Korean. Uh, if it's a government official North Korean license plate, it would be black. Uh, it would be uh, actually, let me just pull up for you real quick North Korean license plate so you can see exactly what that would look like uh, because this is a Chinese license plate and that's what really kind of throws everything off there. Now, this here, all right, these are your, that's your diplomatic. The diplomatic would be Chinese embassy, all right? That's the only blue you would have like that. Otherwise, it's white tags, yellow tags for the private citizens. Military vehicle for, for, the, for the North Korean would be black. And, of course, this is kind of an off different type color of a blue for a chauffeur, but you're not dealing with a chauffeur tag here. You're dealing clearly with a blue tag in the photograph that's offered there uh, in the background. And, of course, the Chinese tags, they are more of that bright blue, as you can see right here with a Chinese tag right here, is that bright blue. And so this is what's brought a lot of concern about is that the car is actually sitting there. And as Sergey kind of mentioned, if I understand uh, the email correctly, that this, of course, this photo going through Reuters, uh, going through RT, no doubt they were examining this, looking at this, and posted this picture here, maybe as an intentional sign to the U.S. military that, yes, the Chinese are backing what North Korea is doing. This may be one reason why Kim Jong-un is so... Uh, adamant and so bold, emboldened uh, in the region here because he has Chinese support. Now, was that uh, was it one of the uh, embassy members? Well, it doesn't really kind of look like the embassy tag because when we begin to look at the embassy tags, they're more of a dark blue here uh, versus the uh, Chinese tag is a lighter blue. And that's what we're seeing in the photograph here is a lighter blue type of tag there. I've looked at this, magnified it, blown it up, and everything else I could just to see. And it definitely does appear to be a Chinese tag. Something of very interest. Again, we know that the Times of Israel, we brought this out yesterday, the first U.S. established permanent military base in Israel. Uh, I do, in one way, I applaud this decision because the fact of uh, the it gives a, a closer unity with Israel and the United States and the protection of the Israeli people. But at the same token, I'm very concerned because of Rome's agenda. Uh, and this, of course, being the first step to where Israel will eventually lose Jerusalem altogether. They will justify a United Nations force to take over Jerusalem. And uh, Israel will slowly but surely lose their own sovereignty. You have to remember, too, uh, two different things. And I want to share this as well. Uh, a friend of mine um, his name is Gad. He sent me, very precious brother here in the U.S., sent me a book, uh, a, a copy of the page. It is from the uh, Protocols of the Leaders of Zion. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of people that said that this was written by the Jewish people. This is not written so much by the Jewish people, but by the Jesuits that were intending on setting up Israel for their own purpose. And this is why we have such a major dispute inside the country of Israel to this day. As I brought out in the video the other day with Ben-Gurion and, 
and Rabin, and they were willing to kill the Jews of the right wing that wanted to liberate Jerusalem, that were not willing to work with Pope Pius XII to give Jerusalem over to the Vatican. All right, so it's, it's these type of evil men, the Jesuits, that were very much determined to take over Israel that brought infiltrators into the country, infiltrated the government, and have tried to maintain power all of these years in order to bring about uh, Rome's agenda. And what's interesting is in the book here, it does say the king of the Jews will be the real pope of the universe, the patriarch of the international church. That lets you know, just as we have shared with you guys before, before, uh, that Pope Francis, when he came to Jerusalem in 2014 and was in the upper room having a communion service there, he's wearing his little crown right here, sitting there right above the tomb of David, declaring that he is the king of Israel. He is the Pope of Rome, which kind of shows you that Protocol of Zion book there. And again, like I said, when we're looking at the Protocols of Zion, uh, I am a firm believer that this was not written by the genuine Jewish people. This was a Jesuit-inspired conspiracy book to begin with of what they intend to do in a new world order. And that's exactly what they're doing. So if you ever happen to read the Protocols of Zion, look at it in that respect there. Uh, this was a Roman agenda from the very beginning. I want to thank Brother Gad for sending me that as well. We talked a little bit last night about this. and. Uh, it was kind of a blessing to see that. So when I see a U.S. base in Israel, although I do appreciate tremendously that the U.S. military is willing to help support Israel, it tells me a couple of things. One, it tells me we're about to go to war in the Middle East, uh, not only with North Korea, but that the war is going to spread much broader. And at this point here, the United States and Israel have agreed together that in order to protect the country, we definitely have to have an alliance to bring in more, not just sending Patriot batteries inside of the country, but no doubt the THAAD missile defense system is what's been moved there. There's been no talk of it that I'm aware of as of yet, but I do believe that that is exactly what got put inside of the country in order to protect Israel from any possible attacks because no doubt Israel will be bombarded by Iran, uh, Hezbollah, and this is exactly why the defense system has been put into Israel with the United States, is to protect Israel from such a bombardment. So I appreciate that part of it, but after this war is my concern. What will happen next? I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching. God bless you. We appreciate you. And thank you for your support, your kindness, those of you that have been helping us to keep this ministry going. Uh, it is your love that keeps that operation happening. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Somebody wrote me and said, you need to update the website, Steve. I wish I could find the time to write on our website. And you're right, I do. I should do at least a article here and there a day to update what's the latest things going on. And I'll try to get to that as well. Shalom.